Lebanese Prime Minister Rafik al hariri met with President Clinton and Secretary of State Albright in Washington earlier this week. He expressed his confidence that the peace talks between his country, Israel, and Syria will be revived within the next several weeks. He joins me now to look at the quest for peace in the Middle East and the future of Lebanese-American relations, and I am pleased to have him here. Welcome. Thank you. Pleasure to have you on the Thank broadcast. You. You. First, uh, the announcement you made in Washington, I think, in which you said that you expect an initiative within weeks to revive peace talks between Israel on one side and Lebanon and Syria. What did you mean and what should we expect? I think we should expect that the negotiation to restart as soon as possible between Lebanon, Syria, and Israel because, uh, you know, now we are, since two years, nothing happened on these two tracks. And uh, it's time that this tracks to, to, to start. You have demanded yes. that they be unconditional. Yeah. No, I didn't say that. I said, uh, we demanded to, uh, to continue the negotiation from where it has been stopped. Israel, it said, uh, they said unconditional, which is means... They want to go back to the beginning. Yeah, uh, square zero, which is nobody will accept that. Yeah. If you pick it up where it stopped, I assume that the Syrians will be very interested in saying that where it stopped was that we had some understanding about the Golan. Exactly. Not only that, also there is some understanding about the security. Security in terms Arrangement of... Arrangement between Israel and Syria. Do you expect and have any indication that the Netanyahu government will find that acceptable? You know, I think it needs uh, a certain initiative and certain energy from the American administration with both parties to find the way and means to uh, reactivate the negotiations. What would you like to see the Americans do? I would like to see them play their role as a guarantor to, to the peace process and as an honest broker to push everybody toward uh, continuing the negotiation. The uh, Hafez al-Assad is prepared to do this now, even though it looks like the Palestinian-Israeli talks are, are at a standstill. Yes, he is. That's a change for him. No, in fact, not. It's not a change, but I'm spelling it very clearly. Uh, I have said several times uh, with the agreement of, of Syria that Lebanon and Syria is ready to continue the negotiation and finalize it within three months if Israel accepts to continue the negotiation from where it has stopped. What if and the, the uh, Syrians are supporting this, uh, uh, this, what I'm saying? What would you do if the Israelis would say as some of, one of them has said, we'll just pull out of southern Lebanon mm -hmm. if you, the Lebanese army, will guarantee the security of that area and make sure that the Hezbollah gets out. Listen, this is, uh, this is to say they are trying to say it, the Israelis since more than five years or eight years, that they want Lebanon to give a guarantee to the security of Israel. We say, on the absence of a peace agreement, nobody will guarantee the security of anyone. Because the kind of relation we have now, it is an unfriendly relation. At the same time, they want us to assure the security of their country, which is nobody will do it. The environment cannot, doesn't encourage anybody to do so. What we are saying that there is two way to cross, two roads to cross. Either Israel will withdraw and take the risk of anything might happen. And we will do our, our best to see nothing happen. But if anything happened, we cannot be accountable for it. And the absence of a peace agreement. If there is a peace agreement between Lebanon, Syria, and Israel, the whole relations will change and will create a new environment among the three countries. Do you make anything out of the fact that Hafez al-Assad just said he's going to come to visit Lebanon? Yeah, someone asked me today, uh, you know, I am visiting everybody and everybody is coming to visit Lebanon, right. and why Hafez al-Assad doesn't come? I said the President Tehrawi, uh, he already... Uh, President of Lebanon. Uh, yeah, invite him, and President Assad uh, promised that he will come, and I think he will come. And so that's what, that's what the press reports today were, simply somebody asked you and you said you'll come, and so he's coming. Yeah, I hope but, so. But it's the first time he's been there in the years that Syria has been, in a sense, the 
played yeah. the role it does today in Lebanon. I don't remember that any, pre any Syrian president visited Lebanon. I don't know. We went to the Baca Valley. That's the only place I yeah, know that maybe, he's yeah. been. I don't think he's certainly hasn't been. But let me stay with the Amer What kind of feedback, what kind of response did you get from the Secretary of State of the United States and from the President of the United States when you said to them, I need you to play a more stronger role in getting this talks going on between Syria, Lebanon, Israel? They said they will do it. They'll do it? Yeah. And what do you think the Israelis will say now? I think the Israeli also, also they want to continue the negotiation. But you're at a different point because they're not prepared yes, to, to go. I from know that, that you see there is a different, uh, different opinion how to start the negotiation. Right. But both of them, they want to, they want to negotiate. Yeah. But there is a, a different point of view how to start it, not from where. The Israeli knows very well that they cannot go back to uh, square zero. It is impossible. How the do you know they know that? You know, they they'll know, say they, we, they, we had they nothing Hamas, to do with that agreement Hamas made between Rabin, Al Perez, and, and Assad, and it's not our concern. We didn't make that agreement. You see, if they go this way, and if they said this, it means any other government will come, they will say, look, you did an agreement with the previous government, we forget about it now, we have to start from yeah. zero. This is not so national way. honor demands yeah. that they exactly, and you think they'll accept that? I think they have to accept a way to start the negotiation. Make the argument for peace. So there's peace. What happens? Oh, it, if there will, is a it, will peace, will it unleash this economic um, wonderland that Shimon Peres used to talk about? This new economy? Hmm. No, you see, at, at the first thing will happen that the children of Israel and the children of Lebanon and the children of Syria, they will have an assurance for their own future. Now, the future of the children of Israel is not sure. They, have, they are strong militarily, and then what? You know, being strong is not enough. Being very, you have the strongest army is not enough. The future can be assured through a peaceful relation and friendly relation. How do you speak to their fear when they look at their borders and they look at those who, who have threatened to drive them into the sea and they look at, I mean, what, what derailed the peace talks at the time that after Rabin's death and when Perez was prime minister was the terrorist bombings of the buses in Israel. Why? Because there is no peace. Look what happened between Germany and France. They made wars for years and years. Now, President Chirac and Chancellor Kohl, they meet twice per month and they speak to each other twice or three times per week. Could you imagine 50 years ago that something like this could happen? Is it fair to read into what you are saying and what uh, Afaz al-Assad may be saying that you have given up for the time being on, on the negotiation between Israel and Palestine, and the PLO or the Palestinian Authority. You just, you are disappointed by the progress. You believe it's at a stalemate and you're not going to wait any longer. You're going to go ahead and negotiate on your own. No. It we are not saying this. Why thing. shouldn't I read that into it? No, we are not saying this. We are saying from the first beginning that we want to continue the negotiation. We did not stop the negotiation. Israel stopped the negotiation. The American After concentrate, the terror, yeah. yeah, the American concentrate only on the Palestinian track. And we were always saying that it is wrong. You have to concentrate on all tracks, Palestinian, Lebanese, as well as the Syrian. And you cannot make peace on the region through uh, only one track. What if you do make peace between Israel and Lebanon and Syria? Does that put more pressure on the Palestinians to make no, it peace? Will, no, it will help everybody. It will help both parties to, to, to go ahead with the peace, the Palestinian and, and, the, and the Israeli. Especially, there is an agreement between Israel and the Palestinian. What they are doing now, they are trying to implement the agreement they already had uh, in Oslo. Yeah, not very well, though. Yeah, well, not very well done. I mean, this is why uh, we think it's not the right one. But anyway. It is, it is there. We, we, we hope for both parties. Uh, good luck. Look, now Egypt, they made a peace with Israel. No? Yes. Egypt is trying to play a positive role to push forward the peace agreement with everybody. So if Syria and Lebanon sign a peace agreement with Israel, 
this will help the peace in general. Let me move to Beirut. Uh, you have made, as a private entrepreneur in Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Then you got into politics. Mm -hmm. Why would you do that? I mean, to go and think that you could change things in Lebanon, a great jewel on the Mediterranean, mm -hmm. which had been devastated, and you come in there thinking you can make a difference. I did. What did you do? I did a lot of things. I think Beirut now is not the same as it was before I became prime minister. Now everybody admit that Beirut now and Lebanon in general, and Beirut in particular, is coming back to be the jewel of the Middle East. Massive and, rebuilding. Yeah. Saving some of the antiquities, but really going in with bulldozers and saying, we're going to create a new city. Listen, the one who destroy the city is the war, right. not me. I'm trying to save what they left, and I saved a lot of things. You get $60 million in aid from the United States? Something like this. Is that enough? No. You want more? I want more and more. What'd they say? Oh, they said they have problem of budget, they have problem uh, Why? But anyway, we, uh, we, uh, we are trying to help ourselves through, through so, our own uh, ways. You, you borrowed a lot of money? Yeah. We borrow money Bond, from bond, Bonds and... Yeah. We are using all means to rebuild our country. We are using private sector. We are using system of BOT. We are using... We are borrowing money from the international community, from the market, from the Lebanese people, from the World Bank, from the Saudi funds, Kuwaiti funds, Arab yeah. funds, from all, all, all our friends. And we have a lot of friendly countries in the world. How do you see the future between Syria and Lebanon? I think the future will remain a friendly future. Will they be the sort of, have the prominent role they do, in a sense? Will they have the power? You know, we are very close together. We have the, the largest border between Lebanon and Syria, and we have historical and geographical relation. Nobody can deny that, and nobody can forget it. And, uh, but we have a different regime, and uh, we... But you can't want them to have that kind of influence on your country, do you? I mean, doesn't that strike at your sovereignty? You know, in fact, uh, the picture from outside is different than the reality. Uh, what we have, uh, the tightest relation we have is related to the peace, uh, peace process and peace negotiations. On other uh, relations, we, we do what we think is right for our country and they do what is right for their country. Today I have been asked the same question and I said, let's, let's take an example. They don't have a relation with South Korea, we do have a relation with South Korea. We, uh, we have strong relation with Vatican. They don't have an ambassador with Vatican. But you don't have any significant, there's no significant point where you are challenging them. Uh, you know, we are a small country. We never had a, a, a policy, foreign policy to challenge anybody, neither Syria or any other country. We are a small country. You have to live with your neighbors. Yes. Thank you for coming to our broadcast, Mr. Thank Prime you. Minister. Thank you. We'll be right back. Stay with us.